David Buzzinelli, welcome to uh, Business Profiles. Thank How you, are you? Mickey. Very good, thank you. Great. You, for our viewers, you are the owner and founder of Studio 16 Architecture. That's right. Uh, my first question is, what inspired you to become an architect? That's a great question. I, I guess from an early age, thinking as far back as I could, somewhere in grade school, I kind of got fascinated with buildings mm. and specific more, more about the way they look, with the way they function, being being so young. And I guess I decided that I wanted to build stuff. So um, my father being an engineer, electrical engineer, I kind of didn't want to go down that path right. uh, to engineering. So I chose architecture. I like to draw. So it, 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 it was a nice, logical place to go. Right. Explain me. to us uh, what the definition of an architect is. Well, going back to the original Greek, architecton, it stood for master builder. So from that word, and architects used to be the master builder. If you go back in history, the architect was the person who designed the building, who engineered the building, and who constructed the building. Over time, our role has certainly changed, and an architect is now not only the person who designs the building and conceives of the building, but leads the construction process. And also takes on many of the other roles, depending on his or her choice for, for um, uh, career path, to be facilities managers, interior designers, construction managers, um, you name it. There's many, many roles for architects in society today. Right. And, and I would think it's also important that when you're having work done that you think is done, being done by an architect, uh, it's very important that they are. That's true. And the point being that an architect legally is a person who is licensed and registered in the state in which he or she practices. Mm -hmm. so anybody who calls themselves an architect and is not duly licensed and registered cannot practice architecture. Yeah. Well, what are some of the misconceptions that you experience uh, with clients uh, when, when dealing with an architect? What are the misconceptions that they might have? Well, some of them might be that uh, the uh, architect is, an ex is a great expense in terms of professional fees. Uh, and that's not really true in terms of, of the actual dollar amount being spent on the entire construction process. It really is evaluated and a smaller percentage of the construction cost that you might really know. And also the, the another misconception is something that uh, where the owner might think that we'll just kind of regurgitate what they want. But our job is not to do that, is to actually interpret the wants, needs, and desires of the client regardless of project size. Uh, and come up with a design that will solve the problem and be an enhancement to their lives and to their business. Sure. Now, you, I know you're modest, but you are an outstanding architect Thank and you. have been f for many years. Thank you. Uh, but my, my question is, uh, at the, in the beginning and during, your career, and during your career, who have been your influences? Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright is my main influence. Um, Richard Meyer is another big influence, and he studied right, so that's logical. Frank Gehry is a big influence uh, nowadays, just in the terms of how innovative he is and the way he's able to get things done his way, which mm -hmm. is what Meyer mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. Wright also did um, yeah. Yeah. in their own way. And I, I think that um, just the surroundings that I'm in is an influence. Uh, novels are, have been an influence. Music has been an influence. Would you say as an architect that you have a specific style? Um, I would call my style modern uh, in the broad sense, mm -hmm. although the firm mm -hmm. has done some pretty eclectic work. But myself, by my personal preference is for modern buildings that are of their time and of their place. Okay. Can, can you explain to us, uh, David, a little bit about the history of your firm? Yes. Uh, the firm was actually begun in 1972 by Nicholas Salvadale. Oh. Uh, on Staten Island, and in 1996, I had been working uh, for Nick for, for quite a number of years, as well as uh, uh, my partner, Susie Giaquinto, and Nick decided to retire, and he offered us the firm. So we purchased the firm, mm -hmm. became partners with Nick, created Salvadeo Associates Architects PC. Uh, unfortunately, Nick passed away several years ago, and Salvadeo Associates then had needed a complete rebranding, um, given the fact that now, Caesar and I were completely guiding the firm. And so I created Studio 16 to uh, 
move the, pro the firm forward and to further reflect what we had done as Salvadeo Associates. Just a continuation of what right. was already, so exactly. the foundation was there. The foundation was there and it was, it was a rebranding and revisioning. Right. Uh, we, we often hear, hear the term green buildings. Yes. Uh, but my question is, is this a recent development or have green, green construction uh, and efforts for green construction been around for a long time? Um, well, the short answer is every architect is trained to do a green building. And this was way before the term green building came into play. It began in Europe, I want to say, mid-80s. You mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hear that bandied around in, 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 the, in, the, in the trade press. Sure. And, and it came uh, to be a term used here more and more in the 90s. And, of course, it's all over today. But really, green building, to me, is probably the best building that you can get, or best interior that Why you so? can get. Why so? Because we always have to pay attention to energy efficiency, to efficiency of material use, indoor air quality, proper lighting, proper use of daylight, very, very important, natural ventilation, all of these things, proper siting of the building to take advantage of what the sun can do huh. uh, in terms of lighting and, and heating and cooling. So we're trained to do that from day one, but now it's really in the public eye and the public expects I think more and more their buildings to be, um, I guess, overtly con green. and consciously designed yeah. as green rather than, well, this is something that we do all the time. Right, right. Uh, now, as I mentioned uh, at the top, uh, your reputation as an architect uh, con continues to, to uh, get rave reviews. <laughs> but, uh, but my question is, well, what are some of the projects uh, that you've worked on over the last decade that you're most proud of? That's a great question. I have so many of them. Uh, I think my favorites, the one that really was what I call the breakout project was the St. Clair's uh, Early Childhood Center and Power Center in Grey Hills mm -hmm. on Staten Island, Staten Island. Yeah. Uh, which was a radical design for which I partnered with an architect, uh, Stephen Perella, uh, who's now deceased unfortunately. He was a good friend of mine. And we put our heads together and, and used one of uh, his favorite theories known as hypersurfaces to design that facility. Um, the, the, the enrollment of that preschool doubled after that design was complete. Uh, and another favorite of mine is the, the, uh, the dining room reconstruction uh, of the Marina Cafe. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and that started off life as an interior redecorating project and the solving of some problems like uh, leaky skylights and, and window replacement and, and, and things like that. But there were so many problems to solve that I suggested to the owners that it would be more efficient to just tear the entire thing down to the deck and rebuild it. Right, and, and of course, for, for our viewers, it was also on the waterfront. Yes. Uh, how does that come into play when you're creating a unique architectural project? Uh, good question. We had to make sure that the uh, underside of that deck was as waterproofed as we possibly could because of high tide conditions. Right. We had to we had to fix some pilings which were rotted out, and that's normal for for a waterfront facility. Yeah that's over the water. Uh, the design itself in terms of the form should, have, should be reflective of, of the site. And in this case, we designed a double curved roof profile to echo the waves right. in, the, in, in, in the harbor. And we, it's, all, it's two full sides of glass with our, operable clerestory windows, which is, it, it help with venting. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a quite green project. And I guess my third favorite would have been the VIP car wash. Yeah, well, amazing. Staten Island. Amazing. Uh, how, and, how, what do you do with a car wash? What do you do with a car wash? The owner, to his credit, said, the, 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 but the better building I build, uh, the more customers I'm going to attract, which uh, will be better for my business. Sure. Uh, so we absolutely agreed. And the whole concept behind that was color, light, and motion, a celebration of cars. And I think that's reflective in both the exterior, which is a glazed concrete block material, and the interior, which is sky lit and has a lot of color. And it's so impeccably clean. You could probably eat off the floor of the, uh, uh, of the lube center. And I think that's a function of, of the design also. Sure, you sure. just pride in the ownership. Yeah. Moving forward, what kind of projects does your firm uh, normally uh, like to uh, acquire? We like to acquire uh, custom residences, both new and, and renovations. And I'm working on a very, very modern renovation now uh, on a, on a, of a house in Tottenville, right across the street from the conference house. Historical site, water view, fantastic project. Uh, I also like to do 
restaurants, they're, they're a favorite of mine. Yeah. Commercial jobs, um, medical offices, uh, I'll entertain a tower or two if, uh, uh, if the opportunity arises, certainly. Um, but we pretty much uh, keep our eye on a, a wide variety of projects to keep things interesting. Yeah, I, I, I did want to uh, ask you how your firm might differ from other architectural firms that are out there. That's a good question, and it's not always an easy one to answer. Yeah. But I think that what I've done uh, over the past decade, if not more, let's say 12, 14 years, mm -hmm. is to position the firm as uh, a very modern firm that breaks the mold for typical firms located where I am. Um, it, I find Staten Island a very good place to be located in terms of access to the tri-state area because I'm licensed in New York, New Jersey, sure. and Connecticut. Um, but we, we really do pay attention to it, interpreting the needs of the owner and giving them a building that will make their lives better or an interior space that will make their lives better. And, and paying attention to the things that I mentioned before, indoor air quality sure. is one of my pet peeves. Is something that yeah. we pay attention to. Sure. <clears throat> when does the job of an architect start? The beginning, generally, it's after property is acquired, and now the desire is to build Project X, whether it be a house or a yeah, commercial yeah. building or an interior project. But the job of the architect can even start before that with site selection. Yeah. I'm involved in a project yeah. right now in which the owners have engaged me to help them select the proper site. So we've had several meetings with the investors and with the real estate brokers to look at various properties. Sure. Uh, and that's uh, becoming more and more prevalent, I think, uh, at least for my practice. And um, it's a good idea. Yeah. It's a good yeah. idea. Certainly, you don't want to buy a piece of property and then have it and say, uh oh, I'm a little bit too limited for this piece. Now, yeah. what do I do? Yeah. How would you describe uh, the role of an architect uh, in society today? Great question, Mickey. The role of the architect really is to shape society. Uh, generally, in most locations, one cannot build without having an architect. So if simple you, as that. Yeah, simple if you think about it, and uh, if you think about it, that from a legal standpoint, law requires it, and from the standpoint of getting a, a, a building built, you yeah. need the architect. Uh, we're the we're the creators of, of the space, and 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 that's really our role. Uh, we have the ability to solve many, many problems from you know, what to do with the kitchen addition yeah. to dealing with big infrastructure and transportation projects. Yeah, and it's important to, uh, to mention that when you're doing these projects, I mean, they're projects that people are going to be living in this space, working in this space for many years to come. That's right. So why not do it right and creative? That's right. That's right. You're, to, to, to engage uh, in, in a project uh, and bring an architect in second or third or to tell the architect, well, I don't really want anything special. Why? That doesn't really facilitate, <laughs> it doesn't really serve your needs because special uh, doesn't mean expensive. And a point in, uh, a perfect example is the St. Clair's Preschool. The, mm -hmm. the only custom element, true custom element in that project was the specialized metal ceiling. Everything else is sheetrock, paint, and metal studs. But it's, and, and some and some plaster, yeah. uh, real actual plaster on metal lath. But those materials are everyday off-the-shelf materials, okay. and it's not a box, and there's nothing rectilinear about it. So that just proves that one can stay within a budget, and have something extremely special. Right. But the architect should be brought into the project at the beginning. That's right. Not three steps down the road. That's correct. And also, the architect really should be engaged until the very end of the project because we're also trained to deal with the construction process and manage the construction project, whether we're the actual construction managers or just helping to the, uh, the process management and assisting the owner with uh, payments to the contractors, uh, actually even selecting the contractors dealing with, and dealing with that entire process. Yeah. What, what's the best part of what you do? Everything. <laughs> it's a real passion, I guess. It really is. You have to love it, uh, which I do. And I think that every, every part of the process is fascinating. Yeah. You also have, you do belong to and, and have held positions uh, in AIA, the organization. Explain to us a little bit about that. Uh, well, AIA is the American Institute of Architects, which was started back in the 1800s uh, here in New York City. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think the first meeting was held at Delmonico's, uh, believe okay. it or not. And mm -hmm. um, I've held positions in the local chapter, AIA Staten Island, 
uh, and I'm a past president of AI Staten Island, and I'm the current immediate past president of AI in New York State, which represents over 6,000 registered architects in the state of New York. And how does that help your firm? Uh, I think it helps indirectly with, with credibility. Um, if somebody would look at, at the, uh, the credentials of the firm and seeing a past president of a local AIA chapter and a past president of the state uh, AIA, that lends an air of credibility, uh, I think, to the firm. It doesn't bring work in, uh, directly in, but it, it certainly helps, and it's been an enjoyable part of, enjoyable part of my career. All right. Well, now, if somebody is looking for your services, uh, do you meet with them one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, how do they contact you? Do you have a website? We have a website, which is www.s16a.com. Uh, I found more and more uh, potential clients contacting me due to my website. Uh, of course, numbers in the phone book, uh, but many, many, many clients come through personal referrals. Word of mouth, the old traditional way of doing business. Years from now, when you look back, what do you hope that your legacy will be? Well, that I did some good buildings. <laughs> many of them. Yeah, many. David Busanelli, founder uh, and owner of Studio 16 Architecture. Keep up the great work and many more years of success. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure.